A group of Americans has been stuck thousands of miles away from home in South Africa for more than a month. Among those stuck, family members of one of our team members here at News 19. We're going to talk with her in just a moment, but first, a closer look at the situation. The videos and photos are what dream vacations are made of. Walks along the beach, trips to see baobab trees, all half a world away in South Africa. We also did some motorcycle riding. We traveled around a bit. Joshua Nightiver and his dad Cecil landed on March 1st. It was a return for Cecil, who worked there years ago. Uh, we'll take some time off from work and we'll go visit my friends in South Africa for a little bit. They expected to come home to Houston about a month later. Then COVID-19 started its spread across the globe. By the fourth week, um, all of our attempts to fly back home uh, were canceled. Joshua snapped this photo when they tried to get to the airport in Pretoria. And this is video of the U.S. Embassy there. Two attempts to get in, haven't been able to speak to an American or anybody. They say the only communication they receive comes via press releases, like this one from Thursday, announcing the cancellation of a South African Airways repatriation flight with the note, quote, we have no information on any other potential repatriation flights at this time, and quote, we have no information on when commercial flights will resume. We've been getting more desperate to get back home because uh, we're small business owners. Things are starting to get back up and running in Texas. While they're in South Africa, that business, Total Leather Care, is being run by mom Nadia, who's holding down the fort in Houston. What is that hug going to be like when you guys get back? Oh, it'll be pretty, it'll be pretty great, you know. At this point, though, Joshua is not getting his hopes up. I'll believe it when I see it, I guess you could say. The Nightiver family has been in contact with Senator Ted Cruz's office. They got this email yesterday, which says in part, the State Department is still considering all options to assist U.S. citizens in South Africa. Brandy Smith, KHOU 11 News. We know the coronavirus pandemic has impacted families all across the country, and it hit home for us here at WLTX. Shayla Nightiver, you all don't get to see her on camera often, but she's one of those people who's behind the scenes and she makes it happen for us. Shayla, good to see you. Hi, good to see you too. Shayla, talk to us about what's going on with your, your dad and your brother in South Africa and why they have not been able to make it home. Yeah, um, so they went on vacation to South Africa at the beginning of March. And they were supposed to leave at the end of March, but the coronavirus um, kind of hit everywhere all at once, and they weren't able to take their flight back to Houston, um, and they weren't actually able to get any sort of flight out of South Africa. So they've been there trying to get out, um, just booking flights, rebooking, trying to get in touch with embassies, all of that um, since the end of March. So what's been the holdup? Why can't they get out of South Africa? Yeah, um, so it's probably a lot of things, but all of the repatriation flights, um, they haven't actually been able to get on or they've been canceled. And so they're, they're really not getting any help from anyone there. They're getting voicemails. They're getting just kind of canned answers. Nobody knows what's going on. Nobody knows when a flight's going to come. Um, and all commercial airlines have stopped. So they're, they're stranded. This is heartbreaking. Your dad and your brother were supposed to be back on March 31st. Yeah, it's definitely, um, it, it personally, it gives me a feeling of helplessness. I can't call anybody that can really help me. Um, I can't, you know, get them back myself. Um, and it's just heartbreaking, you know, because they're my, they're my family. They're, they're supposed to be home and I can't do anything to ensure their safety. Do you feel like they're safe where they are? Yeah, I think they are. Um, I mean, they're, they're just renting a place um, up there but they're quarantined too, so that they have just as much um, like liability to be exposed to the coronavirus um, as anyone does. And they don't have the doctors um, that they have here. They don't have the family, the support, the money. They're, you know, they're spending thousands of dollars just to be able to stay there when they really just want to come back. Have they been healthy the entire time they've been there? Yes, they have. Um, thank goodness they're okay. So what's the next step, Shayla? Um, I mean, we've been calling everybody we know. We've been reaching out to, you know, our congressmen uh, there in Texas, where they're from, where I'm from, and then here in South Carolina, where I currently am. Um, and we've been, I mean, contacting anybody and everybody, but kind of that same 
that same thing that I was saying earlier, we haven't really gotten any, um, any real answers. It's just, I don't know. And well, you know, we're trying to figure it out, but you know, here's a website you can check. Yeah. Every day we hear a different angle to this story. And I'll be honest with you outside of your family. I was thinking everybody who wanted to be repatriated had already made it back to the U S but this is proof that it is not happening uh, across the country. Yeah, and it's not just them there. They know Americans. They're on a they're on a Google Hang with a bunch of Americans who are also stuck in South Africa, also going through the same stuff. Um, there are some elderly folks who are part of that group, and just, I mean, they're all trying to get back, but nobody's really listening. Yeah. Well, Shayla, obviously, your brother and your dad are in our thoughts and prayers, and of course, you know, WLTX. We're a family, so if there's anything we can do to help you, we've got your back. Thank you so much, Darcy.